At the end of 1990, after seven years on shelves, the original Transformers toy line came to an end in the United States. But there was still life left in the series internationally. New toys continued to be developed for markets like Europe and Japan over the next few years. The line's continued success in Europe specifically convinced Hasbro US that the brand was still viable, so they decided to relaunch Transformers in the American market. Sponsored by Patreon supporter Dad Brad, these are the basics on Transformers Generation 2. The first wave of Generation 2 toys was released just in time for Christmas 1992, followed quickly by the rollout of the full line in early 1993. This first year of the series was a rather conservative one, consisting mostly of modified re-releases of figures from the original toy line. Some, like the Dinobots, the Constructicons, and a handful of Autobot mini-vehicles were simply given new colour schemes while others, like a selection of Autobot cars and Decepticon jets and Optimus Prime himself, were given a mixture of new colours and new accessories, like firing missile launchers and electronic light and sound power packs. A sampling of figures from the European market were also brought over to the US for the first time. The Autobot Accelerator cars and Decepticon Skyscorcher jets and the colour changers, water sporting figures who changed colour in warm water. The sole brand new figure was Megatron, with changes to toy gun legislation meaning that his original pistol figure couldn't be re-released, a new version of the Decepticon leader was created that turned into a huge green and purple tank. Topped off with redesigned Autobot and Decepticon insignia, the line was a combination of old and new that exemplified the decade's excesses, loaded with big guns and loud colour schemes, advertised by TV commercials featuring the exciting new technology of CGI animation. All to say that these weren't the crusty old Transformers of the past, but hot new bots for the super cool 90s. As with the original series, Hasbro marketed Generation 2 with a two-pronged advertising push of a cartoon and a comic book by their old partners, Marvel Comics, which both premiered in September. The cartoon took an approach much like the toy line, consisting of re-edited episodes from the original 80s cartoon that inserted CGI overlays and scene transitions into the animation. Thirteen episodes modified with this new framing device, called the Cybernet Space Cube, aired this year, pulled from the original show's first and second seasons, focusing mostly on the Dinobots and Constructicons. The comic, by contrast, was all new. It was promoted in advance by a crossover with fellow Hasbro brand G.I. Joe, Running in the Joe comic from May to September, the five-part story picked up where the original Marvel Transformers series had left off two years earlier, and saw Megatron ally with the Joe's enemies, Cobra, who rebuilt him into his new tank form. The Generation 2 comic itself launched the same week the crossover concluded, written by returning original series author Simon Furman and illustrated by Derek Yaniger and Manny Galan. A grim and gritty affair for the edgy, ultra-violent world of 90s comics, the series took its title literally, telling the story of Optimus Prime and Megatron joining forces to battle a breakaway second generation of Decepticons, led by the merciless Geaxis. In 1994, Generation 2 expanded with multiple brand new figures. There were the Rotor Force, bots with firing propeller weapons, the Laser Rods, Hot Rod Cars with Light Up Swords, new hero versions of Optimus Prime and Megatron with bellows-operated missile launchers, and the triple-changing stealth bomber Decepticon Dreadwing. Original series combiner teams, the Aerial Bots and the Combaticons, were re-released with new colour schemes. Their fellow combiners, the Protectabots and the Stunticons, were also planned for release, but wound up being cancelled. Though a few hundred copies of the Stunticon Breakdown were produced and offered as an exclusive at the very first official Transformers convention, Botcon, that summer. 
this year's commercials dropped traditional narration in favour of rap songs about the toys, which would become one of G2's most distinctive and memorable features. It's heavy metal crunching time as Optimus Prime goes toe to toe with Combat Megatron. Prime is one tough dude underneath his hood, he's a Transformer Missile Fun Phenomenon. A second and final season of the Generation 2 cartoon was produced for this year, consisting of 39 more re-edited original series episodes. But the comic wasn't so lucky. Only guaranteed to run for one year, its sales weren't high enough to justify its continuation, and it concluded in August after 12 issues, wrapping up with the story of the Transformers' battle against the ancient force of darkness, the Swarm. There were plans for a G2 video game from British developer Argonaut this year, but it never happened. It was also in 1994 that Generation 2 launched in Europe. The toy line here was slightly different from the American one, as in addition to the figures released in the US, it also included all the original toys that had been developed for the European market the previous year, now re-released under the Generation 2 banner. These included the Obliterators, but with trailers that converted into missile-firing battle stations, and the Lightformers and Tracons, who came with weapons platforms that used light piping to simulate laser fire, along with a new European exclusive for this year, recolors of the spark-shooting Sparkabot and Firecon toys from the original series. To tie in with the launch, British publisher Fleetway Editions released their own version of the G2 comic in the United Kingdom, which opened with an original two-part story by Furman and artist Robin Smith, then segued into reprints of the Marvel series. But it was a pretty dismal failure, and was cancelled after only five issues. 1995 was the first year of Generation 2 to consist of all-new product but it would also be the last. This year saw the release of the Cyberjets, highly poseable jets with built-in missile launchers, the GoBots, small bots who turned into Hot Wheels-style cars, the Auto Rollers, Decepticons that automatically converted between modes when rolled back and forth, the Laser Cycles, motorcycles with light-up weapons, and the centerpiece of the year, a heavily armed light-up laser version of Optimus Prime. Sadly, by this point, as evidenced by the cancellation of all its major supporting media, the line was struggling. Hasbro tried a few tactics to refresh it, offering new pop-up trading cards as pack-in promo items with the figures, and actually dropping the Generation 2 subtitle from the packaging in the US. But with sales slumping, the end was inevitable. Generation 2 was cancelled halfway through the year, leaving numerous planned figures unreleased. Of these cancelled toys, four, the Power Masters, bots with pullback motors, were released in Europe and Australasia. But the others, including six new mold GoBots, two new mold Auto Rollers, four spring loaded flip changers, and an assortment of recolors, remained unproduced. It was a sadly similar story in Japan, where G2 was launched this year. The first new Transformers product released in the country since 1992, the line consisted of a small cross-section of the American figures, supplemented by pack-in mini-comics and full-colour spreads in the monthly TV magazine by artist Hidetsugu Yoshioka. A one-shot manga special by Masahito Tanaka was also published in Comic Bomb Bomb magazine in August, in which the Autobots and Decepticons battled over the new super energy source, Forestonite. But the line didn't take off, and lasted only one year. Generation 2 seems to have largely been a victim of poor timing. The original toy line simply hadn't been over for long enough, and the toys themselves weren't different enough for G2 to seem all that new. To say nothing of the fact that 1993 would also see the launch of one of the decade's hottest new toy properties, Power Rangers, which immediately took all the attention off Transformers. 
Realizing that if the brand was going to survive, it would need to move in an entirely new direction, Hasbro handed Transformers over to its recently acquired subsidiary company, Kenner, to experiment with, leading to its reinvention as Beast Wars, bringing a new wave of success in the late 90s that ensured Transformers would be around for decades to come. Though it wasn't a big success story, Generation 2 has had a long-lasting legacy that's still impacting new Transformers series today. G2 toys marked a notable increase in articulation over the original series that would only grow to become a standard feature of future lines, and many of the figures have been recolored and re-released in other series over the years, with even some of the cancelled toys eventually being made available this way. The Flip Changers were finally released in 1997's Machine Wars, while the Auto Rollers saw the light of day in 1998's Beast Wars Second, and four of the six Gobots were dusted off for 2001's Robots in Disguise. And many new toys have been produced that pay homage to Generation 2's original characters and to the line's iconically 90s colour schemes including a special 2010 BotCon exclusive G2 themed set, accompanied by a new comic that introduced the G2 characters into the world of the original cartoon. And most recently, in 2023, an entire subline dedicated to cancelled G2 recolors in the Transformers Legacy toy line. Sadly, unlike the original Marvel comic book, the Generation 2 comic has rarely been reprinted and modern continuations of the Marvel Comics universe, like Fun Publications' Classic Verse and IDW Publishing's Regeneration 1, have ignored its events in favour of picking up where the original series ended and taking the story in a different direction. Nevertheless, it's made several significant contributions to Transformers canon, the Swarm would be tied to the origins of the Vok, a mysterious race of aliens from the Beast Wars cartoon. Comic villain Geaxis has become a recurring character with multiple major appearances in new comic stories, and he's even made the jump to toy form several times. Most recently, both he and his second-generation Decepticon minions received figures based directly on the art of the G2 comic in the Legacy line. Also, Simon Furman would tie off the comic's unfinished story in an unofficial novella titled Alignment. Published between 2001 and 2002, it told the story of Geaxis's secret master, the Liege Maximo, who would then go on to become a key figure in the lore of ancient Cybertron across multiple series. But easily the most significant contribution Generation 2 made to Transformers history was an indirect one, inspired by its name. You see, back in the day, fans all across the world reasoned that if this new series was called Generation 2, well then that must mean that everything from before it was Generation 1. And what started out as a piece of retroactively coined fan terminology would, in the 21st century, become the definitive official name to refer to the classic 80s toy line and all its associated media and characters. It may not have been the greatest generation, but Generation 2 wound up defining Transformers not only for its own era, but for everything that came before it, and set the stage for everything that would come after. And those are the basics on Generation 2. Thanks to Dad Brad for sponsoring this episode. What are some of your favourite G2 toys or characters? Let me know in the comments. More sponsored episodes still to come, so make sure and subscribe so you don't miss them. And if you're able, you can support the show on Patreon too. 